Nortec. Always target precision. Hi, I'm here at the Tagliamento River in northeastern Italy with the research team from the IGB. They're just about to start their latest field experiments and uh, I've worked with this group before but I haven't been back in five years. So today I'm curious to find out what's new. Alex, this looks like an elaborate field setup. It requires a lot of work. Why do you do this and what's the difference to common field measurements? Common field measurements, they provide the information about present state of the system. Mm -hmm. uh, in contrast, the field experiments, uh, they allow control of the variables we are interested in. Oh, I see. So how do your experiments relate to processes in natural rivers? Well, it's a good question, Julian. Scientists see natural rivers as highly complex, self-organizing systems. On the scale of a river channel, a good example of self-organization is the effect of local flow disturbances on the dynamics of entire floodplain morphology and its riparian ecosystem. Boulders and trees in a stream generate hydrodynamic structures called wakes. How do these small-scale turbulent structures affect large-scale channel processes? Let's illustrate this by observations in the Talamento River, the field site of our research project that focuses on the dynamics of shallow wakes. During heavy rains, this river floods and moves gravel and sand, fallen trees, saplings of plants and insects. As the flood ends, the plant saplings and seeds become randomly buried in the sediment deposits. When water recedes, the life begins on a bare riverbed. Soon the plants germinate and form homogeneously looking meadows. But due to species-specific differences in growth rates, some of the plants will have better chances to survive successive floods and the meadows will be transformed into an homogeneous patchy mosaics. The benefit for individual plants is that patchy formation provides protection against hydrodynamic forces during floods. Patches are porous obstructions that push approaching flow around slow it down inside and behind. During high water events, patches collect 
driftwood at their upstream edges. The stagnant waters or wakes behind patches favor the deposition of fine sediments rich with organic matter. The vegetation patches, together with fertile deposits collected by wakes, become the oasis of life on a barren area of stony riverbed. They are the homes for diverse communities of riparian insects, amphibians, and other animals. Although the origin, historicity, and scales of patches and depositions are different, they appear in a regular shape called lemniscate, which reflects similarity in the physical processes. By gaining closer insight into dynamics of wakes, we hope to better understand the mechanisms behind self-organization in fluvial systems. Alex and Sasha constructed a 60 meter long and 10 meter wide in-stream flume. They placed cylinder shaped objects in the middle to generate wakes in the downstream. A floating bridge spans the flume and carries seven Vectrino velocity meters. The flow rate is controlled by a needle veer on the right side of the upstream section. So, Sasha, which uh, variables are you controlling in this experiment? We are controlling the flow rate and the properties of in-stream objects that create wakes, like, for example, their size, their composition, and their submergence in the water. Hey, Alex, I wonder, it's probably much easier to control these variables in the lab, isn't it? For sure, it's much easier to do in the lab. But at this scale, we can better draw conclusions between uh, the flow dynamics and uh, natural processes in the river. This is why the results of such experiments are important for verification of theories and also for assessing unknown factors. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Measurements with velocity meters provide spatial patterns of non-uniform flow past the object. The devices require precise orientation, which is achieved by custom-made mounts, allowing the instruments to be leveled. The sensor heads are accurately positioned in the vertical plane. By moving the bridge, they can also be quickly repositioned in the horizontal plane. So, from how I understand, you're measuring velocity in a single point. Wouldn't it be much easier and efficient to measure velocity in a profile, like with an ADCP? Uh, well, to characterize the dynamic of uh, wakes, we need very accurate single-point measurements of turbulent structures. This is possible with uh, Vectrino devices. Uh, the manufacturer, Nortec, uh, also has very advanced software package, called Explore V. Uh, with the help of this package, we can analyze data and also to do uh, live quality control of the data in the field conditions. This is the operator stack and the office of the field lab. Here we see the electronics that collect the data from the velocity meters. Here we can see instantaneous velocities in a 3D space. They fluctuate because of the turbulent structures passing by. Uh, typically we perform these measurements for about 4 minutes and we do this across multiple cross sections along the flume. Right after each measurement, we can analyze the first data with the help of the Explore V software. Complementary to the velocity measurements in the stream, 
The team is also visualizing the flow. Maybe put a little bit first, yeah? mm -hmm. For this, they inject two fluorescent, non-toxic dyes on both sides of the object. To record the flow visualizations, Alex and Sasha use drones. In recent years, these devices have become very handy in field studies. The clear water that runs through the porous object is called bleed flow. The dyes visualize the mixing layers of the wake, which merges in the downstream. This also shows large-scale lateral structures forming a von Karman vortex street. So Alex, your research group has been carrying out these experiments for many years now. Um, what's new about this study? Yeah, we've been doing uh, field experiments for more than two decades and during this time we were always improving something. For example, right now you can see the bridge, uh, floatable bridge with seven ADVs which allows quick access to larger area. So by doing these uh, experiments we uh, plan to have about 20 or even more experimental runs which will cover quite a large range of the conditions. Alex and Sasha are just at the beginning of their experimental program. They spent the past month constructing the entire setup. The field work will continue for the next three months. During this time, they will collect a comprehensive data set on the dynamics of shallow wakes in a fluvial environment. When I studied fluid mechanics, I learned that most of the theoretical knowledge was gained through small-scale lab experiments. With the development of modern technology, however, it is more and more possible to do experimental research on a more natural scale. I learned a lot during my visit of Alex and Sasha here at Ditagliamento, specifically how they measure complex fluid dynamics using sophisticated field experiments and detailed field measurements.